next Sunday. You can nominate people online, or there are paper forms in the um, narthex on the table next to the bulletins. I think that's it, except for communion instructions, as we are still learning how to be back in the sanctuary together after so long, um, m so long out of it consistently. Uh, just a reminder, at time for communion, the usher will invite your row forward. Um, you come forward to receive the sacrament. You take the cup with your wafer. Please return to your seats through the side aisles and then wait to consume the sacrament until you are at your seat and then remove your mask to do so. I'm going to invite Terry up at this time um, to offer our stewardship reflection for the week. Good morning. Okay, thank you. Good morning. There we go. Now you can see what I really look like. <laughs> Maybe you want me to put it back on. I don't know. <laughs> um, you will have to excuse my nerves a little bit. Um, as a middle school teacher, I'm not used to speaking in front of groups of anyone over the age of 14, so this is a little new for me. Um, thanks to our daughter, Charlie Ann, we discovered St. James. It seemed like everybody in our neighborhood had sent their kids to the preschool, so we thought, why not? Uh, we'll give it a try. We were looking to get her some socialization uh, as an only child after several, several attempts. Um, we feel so blessed to have her, but we're worried that she was missing something by not having a sibling. Um, and when she went to St. James, she really seemed to like it, and she kept coming home saying, Reverend Kristen, Reverend Kristen, Reverend Kristen. And of course, Miss Tara and Miss America, which I thought was a great name. But um, she would tell us all about chapel time. That seemed to be her favorite time, chapel time. You know, Reverend Kristen, she's so nice. She sits on the floor. You know, that, that was cool to her. Um, she tells us stories. And she could relate those stories back to us. So we knew it was making an impact. This was very foundational. And that's kind of what we were looking for. I've never considered myself a religious person. Denise is much more pious uh, than I. But we both grew up being taken to, to church, and it did leave an imprint, uh, just not always a good one. We both feel that Jesus teaches love, love one another, to have hope. And neither of us could rectify those lessons being taught in our childhood church to this fact that we believe that Jesus loves everyone and that we are all created in God's image. We tried going back to uh, that church with Charlie Ann. It just didn't feel right. We didn't want her to be taught anything but that God loves us all, warts and all. We wanted her to have a foundation in a church that accepted her moms along with her without conditions or restrictions. So since Reverend Kristen had made such an impact, we decided to see what this place was all about. We had heard of the Episcopal religion, you know, Catholic light was what it was called uh, in the Catholic Church. But we found out that that's not true. That there's nothing light about being Episcopal. They just love everybody. And what's so light about that? that's actually very heavy and, and good and foundational. From the minute we walked in, it was like we had been here all our lives. We were accepted for who we are with no restrictions as good, loving, hardworking people, just trying every day to be our best. And thanks to Charlie Ann and this lady named Reverend Kristen, we had found our church community. It couldn't have come at a better time. 20 months ago, all of our lives were turned upside down. We were sent home in fear of an unseen enemy that was take, making many people sick and taking the lives of thousands every day. Talk about life's ups and downs. Within the first two months, people lost jobs. Children were sent home from school. People who were able to work had to do so from home at the same time of monitoring their children and their learning. 
Weddings were canceled, birthdays were canceled, movie houses were closed, restaurants were closed. Businesses that couldn't adapt shut their doors for good. And we had our holiday meals on Zoom. We, uh, people died. Hope seemed lost. But St. James was there and remained there with the leadership of that lady, Reverend Kristen. We stayed connected through Zoom. We stayed church through Zoom. And if you were clairvoyant and had bought stock in that company, you're doing very well. We took care of each other. The coffee, how, the coffee hour after mass remained, a place where we could just chat about whatever innocuous thing was on our mind. We traded secrets about our gardens, our children, cleaning, and our simple home lives. And at first that was okay, maybe even fun for some because we were home with our families and safe. But at a point it got a little old. As humans are social entities. We need each other. Even the most introverted of us has at least one friend. The Sunday Zoom mass and coffee hours were an integral part of St. James getting us through that trying time when the fun ended. It was something to look forward to. The va and then vaccines were developed and distributed. People started going back to work. Children went back to school, and there was an audible sigh of relief from parents when uh, that became possible, because it's not easy being a teacher. And we got to come back into our church. Outside or inside, it's our church. So our future is very hopeful. And St. James was and is a huge part of that future and that hope. It was the one constant that we all had during that time. Well, besides the masks. And that is why Denise and I give. We give because we want to help keep that constant, that hope, that love, continuing. We want Charlie Ann to feel a part of something that is bigger than herself. It anchors us in life because hope is foundational. Uh, it has definitely anchored Denise and I through life's ups and downs in these past 20 months. And we are so blessed that we found this place at just the right time. Thank you.